Blockchain technology is rapidly advancing day by day. And Ethereum, the world's leading blockchain smart contract platform, is getting a massive upgrade that's going to make it much faster and also change completely how we use blockchain. And that's expected to arrive in 2023. So if you're trying to take two steps ahead of where this technology is headed, then you need to check out this video because I'm going to explain all this in the video today as a blockchain developer myself who works with the Ethereum protocol on a daily basis. So if you're new around here... Hey, I'm Gregory, and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to learn how to become a blockchain master, step-by-step -step start to finish, land your first blockchain job, then head on over to adaptuniversity.com forward slash boot get started today. All right, so let's jump into this. So Ethereum is going to get a massive upgrade called sharding, which is going to make it much faster and it's also going to completely change how we use blockchains decentralized applications i mean imagine running everything you know seamlessly on your phone so i'll explain more about that benefit here in a second but one of the reasons it's so critical for ethereum itself is one of the most common complaints is that ethereum is too slow it's too expensive to use okay you might have seen the ethereum merge that happened earlier this year where Ethereum switched to proof of stake and a lot of people thought Ethereum was going to get faster and it didn't. So no surprise if you've been watching this channel because I've said that multiple times that this switch to proof of stake was never designed to make Ethereum faster. But that way we'd achieve these scalability enhancements out of things like layer two scaling solutions and also sharding, which I really want to drill down on this video because that's one of the keys to getting Ethereum to this scalability level where it can rival the transaction speeds of Visa. All right, so to set the stage for this, let's look at Ethereum's long-term roadmap, historically what's happened in the past and what's going to happen in the future. So if you're not familiar with Ethereum's sort of philosophy and methodology, it basically was to release Ethereum, the initial version, back in 2015, and then incrementally ship upgrades to the blockchain in a decentralized way over time to make it, you know, better. And since then, we've had all these other things like layer two rollups, which is not technically an Ethereum upgrade, but I put that in the roadmap here, EIP-1559 with the fee burning. And then the merge, which just happened this past year. And then next up on the roadmap is sharding, at least the initial version, which is supposed to expect it in 2023. So one of the biggest reasons that people are so excited about sharding is because it's gonna make blockchains much faster to use. So how does it do that? So we need to understand how sharding works. So let's take, an example that doesn't have anything to do with blockchain and then apply it to blockchain so that you can see exactly what's happening under the hood here. So, you know, if you're a programmer already, you're going to resonate with this analogy. Uh, if you're not a programmer, I think you can still understand this pretty clearly. So let's look at a simple database. It's not a blockchain, it's just a simple database that just contains records inside of it. And the record uh, the records are transactions, you know, transaction one, two, three, four. Don't worry about what's inside the transactions. Just know that all these transactions are inside of a massive database, okay? So once this database starts getting really big, okay, I'm just going to put a big number here, uh, then it can start to become slow, all right? It degrades the performance as it gets, you know, too big. So one strategy for this is to basically break the database up into a bunch of smaller databases that all talk to one another, okay? That's called sharding in you know, the database world. So if you're a programmer, you probably understand this already. But if you're not, then here's a visual of what that would look like. Basically, you would take, you know, just for a simple example here, you could take a quarter of the transactions and put them into one shard. You'd take the second quarter, put them in a different shard, third quarter here, fourth quarter here. And then you have all this orchestration that when you're looking things up, you can tell it where to go to which shard. And when you're updating or inserting information, you just tell it which shard to go to. So with blockchain, you can do the exact same thing. And that's what we're working on with sharding with Ethereum in 2023. So I used, you know, transactions very intentionally here because essentially blockchains are just big databases in one sense that contain all these transactions. Because anytime you do something on the blockchain, you create a transaction and those transactions are bundled together in groups of records called blocks, which are chained together to make it the blockchain. And one of the problems with blockchain scalability is that anytime someone creates a new transaction in order for the network to achieve consensus, you know, all the nodes essentially have to store the entire ledger in order to validate those transactions. And this can present a scalability bottleneck. So what you can do essentially is take the transactions and then instead of making a database of databases, you're really making like a blockchain of blockchains where you say, OK, a certain set of nodes is responsible for, uh, you know, maintaining this part of the blockchain. Another certain set of nodes maintaining this set of the blockchain and you break it up into shards. And then through the peer to peer, you know, software, everybody's still able to communicate with one another to understand that all the shards, you know, work together to collectively make up the correct information. And so effectively what this does is it spreads the computational load across 
all the different nodes in the network so that each node isn't necessarily responsible for everything. All right, so that's how sharding improves the scalability of Ethereum itself. But earlier I was talking about how, you know, part of Ethereum's long-term mission is not just to improve Ethereum itself, but to also use this other thing called layer two scaling solutions to improve scalability. So if you're not familiar with that, that's basically, it's kind of like a separate blockchain, but it's dependent upon Ethereum itself. This is basically a second environment where you do all these transactions and then you settle them back on the main Ethereum chain. That's why I've got it on the roadmap here. Now, what you have to understand is that these Ethereum rollups are going to be affected by sharding because sharding is going to become a massive force multiplier for what layer two rollups can do. And so here's a quick visual to see that. So basically, like, if you look at Ethereum layer one right here, and then here's Ethereum layer two, you know, every block just contains a bunch of different transactions. Just for example, sake, you know, block one has transaction one through 10. All right. And so let's just say that each block can only contain 10 blocks. Well, one path to scalability is to put more information inside of the same amount of space. Okay, so that you can basically scale that way. So that's basically what you do with layer twos is you have a second layer where you do all these transactions and you roll them up and then you put a reference to that inside a single transaction on layer one. And so let's say, for example, you could get, you know, uh, 50x scalability out of a layer two, okay? And then let's say, for example, purposes, you could get a 2x scalability with sharding. Well, basically, you take the scalability that you get in layer two and you multiply it by whatever you get on sharding. So 50x times 2x will be 100x. And we're already seeing some pretty impressive scalability on layer twos, and this is just gonna pour gasoline on that. All right, so that's the main benefit that people are excited about with sharding is the ability for the blockchain to become much faster than it is now so that it can rival you know, centralized competition like Visa, for example. But let's talk about another benefit which is often overlooked with sharding that's gonna completely change how we can use blockchains than how we do it today. So that's basically the ability to run your own node on consumer hardware like a laptop or, you know, a smartphone, for example, okay? So remember what I was talking about before is like when you're doing sharding, you're breaking up the responsibility to a bunch of different people. Now in this example, um, you know, I, I just put four shards on there to just simplify things. But what if you broke this up by thousands and thousands of shards? Okay. So what that can do is, you know, if, if the smaller a shard gets, the less computational resources is required to, you know, run that, run, or run a node Okay, that participates in maintaining that shard. Because right now, if you want to run a Ethereum node, you got to do the entire thing, which is going to require a significant amount of computational resources. You're not going to be able to do it on an iPhone, for example. But with sharding, we actually could get to that point. All right. So this has a lot of implications. Like people complain about, you know, Ethereum having too much of a dependence on centralized hosting providers like AWS or something like that, because if they run Ethereum nodes in the cloud, not on, you know, at home staking. Well, sharding can completely change the game for that where more people could at home stake and not just stake, but also just run any type of client. But here's the other big implication is more decentralized participation in just network activity. So let me explain why. So basically, like let's that's how most people use uh, blockchain is they connect to a wallet like MetaMask on their computer and then they go to a website like Uniswap. OK, but whenever you do that, I'll just pull up this MetaMask here and you like, you know, do a transaction, you know, that's talking to the blockchain, but it's doing it typically by way of a third party node, like you're using someone else's node, because you're not running your own node. If you're running your own node, you'd know it, but you're not. Okay. But with sharding, you could potentially run your own node on your laptop whenever you're interacting with the blockchain or on your smartphone. So what you can see is the coupling of like a wallet application and your own node on your own device, whenever you're using blockchain. So this opens up all kinds of new implications like increased censorship resistant, less trust on third party nodes, and so many other things that we haven't even scratched the surface yet because most people aren't doing this. All right, so when's this going to arrive? When are we gonna be able to experience all these benefits? So we have to kind of break this down because there's a little bit of fine print and that sharding is not just gonna roll out all at one time, okay? So, you know, if we look at my roadmap that I put here, I put sharding, I'll put sharding V2 just for lack of a better word. There's names that they use like uh, protodank sharding and the actual Ethereum teams. But let's, let's just set the stage for this. Basically, you know, we have things like the merge, which is like a one-time event where you just shipped it and boom, it happened. Now, sharding is a little more incremental than that, okay? So the first uh, launch of this, the first version, okay, for the foundations of this entire implementation I'm talking about is slated to arrive in 2023. Now, if you've watched the Ethereum space for a while, you know, it's, we're, it's notorious for pushing these estimates back the closer we get to these deadlines. But typically, whenever, you know, you actually get 
pretty close to these deadlines and, and the teams are like, okay, we're like, you know, two months away from this. That's usually when people are really committing the deadlines because it's usually in the bag and you just got to, you know, hit, you know, ship essentially with all the client teams in order to make it happen. So we don't have that official of a statement yet because we're not quite close enough to that deadline, but the current estimate is 2023. But, you know, the second phase, which would be shard change version two with code execution, it's going to take some a lot more time. We don't really have a strong indication for when that's going to be. But the good news is you don't have to wait for all of that to arrive to get a lot of the benefits that I'm talking about in this video. All right, so that's an overview of the sharding upgrade that's coming out for Ethereum very soon and how this could be a game changer for blockchain scalability over the long term and also completely change how people use blockchains from how they do today. So if you like this video, you know, as always, smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. That really helps the videos out so the more people can learn about blockchain. And if you're as fast at this technology as I am, you want to get your hands dirty, how can you get started today? You can go to my YouTube homepage. You can find those free courses there. They're like Udemy courses, but they're totally free. And if you like those videos and you want to take the next step or hey, maybe you'll take a massive shortcut, go for the throat, land your first blockchain job, increase your salary past 100K. I can show you to do that over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp, okay? You know, to be an expert to get started today, I've helped people with zero coding experience become real world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. And until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.